Hey, hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we go through all the different news stories that have happened throughout the week that I couldn't put into any other videos. And first and foremost, it's the big one this week. I was going to do a dedicated video on this, but unfortunately, there's just not enough to go on right now to make a complete video and make it fair. That is, of course, the QNAP Deadbolt ransomware attack. Started at the time of recording this about three days ago. Um, this is where, once again, a number of QNAP users are reporting that their files have been encrypted it feels like we've been through this before of course um, this is where a lot of you have woken up and I say a lot of you numbers are still seemingly hard to track down I think we're still in double digits at the time of recording this um, but the a lot of people have woken up and found that the files on their QNAP NAS uh, particularly smaller files have been encrypted with uh, the prefix deadbolt that format there. there's a slight difference here in this attack from ones we've seen before um, one of the primary ways you can tell if you've been hit by this is by going and logging into your QNAP NAS and the usual uh, GUI login screen there has been replaced by this deadbolt one saying that your files have been encrypted send us uh, 0.03 bitcoins which is about a thousand to a one thousand one hundred um dollars there to get the decryption key to unencrypt uh, unencrypt your files again this is something we've seen before this is an opening um it looks like an opening to do with the upmp opening seeing as uh qnap have you know for them been surprisingly quick uh, on the response to this i think it was around 18 to 19 hours after pr uh, preliminary preliminary uh, reporting of this um over on bleeping computer and indeed uh people flagging this on their own forums that qnap sort of published some official statements on this and recommendations uh for th things to do with QNAP NAS. Now, again, as I say, a reason I've not done a dedicated video on this, although there is a dedicated article over on NAS Compares, it should be linked in the description, is because right now, a lot of information on this is kind of getting rolled out as we speak. Resolution is certainly not been reached right now. A few people, it looks like, have paid um, to get the decryption key. And on top of that, what we've seen is um, a lot of people have been able to capture and stop this process before it's done any meaningful damage. That is to say that you can see active processes in the resource monitor. And again, I'll be linking towards uh, both the QNAP forum and the Bleeping Computer ongoing forum thread, where a lot of people are reporting what's happened here and also reporting how they're able to stop it early. Now, again, if we go back to other ransomware attacks that have happened previously, you know, QSnatch and QLocker, again, eventually down the line, decryption tools have been reached there's no guarantee that's going to happen here and although if you don't have a backup things may look fantastically bleak at this point i wouldn't go ahead and format that data quite yet because we have seen things like the bloody tools and stuff like that come around which have helped and, and photo rec and stuff like that reverse these things in some cases of course if you have backups in place which you should anyway hopefully you can revert to the most modern backup and not lost much or anything at all depending on the frequency of your backups there one thing that really stands out in this deadbolt attack i've got to say is when you look at when you look at the ransom note that's been left on screen, there's something I've not seen before, and a number of uh, a number of other resources and news platforms have highlighted this. There's a direct reach out to QNAP themselves in this with the uh, the attackers there, uh, the Deadbolt team or whoever they address themselves, um, reaching out and saying that uh, if QNAP uh, pay them five Bitcoin, uh, which I believe is you know between 150 to 200 thousand uh, dollars on current um, valuation, they will give them details on the day zero vulnerability there and therefore they'll be able to stop anything moving forward now if they want uh, the master decryption key to uh, unencrypt everyone's NAS well that's different that's 50 bitcoin they're saying on there to QNAP so again we're talking millions there I think it's like one and a half 1.8 million there and based on current trading value of a bitcoin um, but again this is something we've seen before and of course very easy to levy blame on all sides from users and security protocol to QNAP themselves but it's this is just going this is something we have to live with unfortunately when people that are going to attempt these attacks will keep trying and keep trying and brands can only stay one step ahead real quick we have got a small extra little nugget that came up during the course of editing this video apparently things have been stepped up just a slight notch by qnap this is thanks of course to lawrence abrams on bleeper computer and it looks like qnap have force installed 
one of their latest updates. Their patch there is already in the patch notes there. And if you are a QNAP owner, uh, you may have noticed this morning that your QNAP suddenly has a new update. And of course, anyone that knows about forced updates to NASes, whether they're perhaps utilizing dynamic IPs or perhaps they've got ongoing connections, may have noticed an interruption to those services. And again, one of the things that this um, update does is disabling some of those uh, UPnP um, settings. Again, it's all detailed there in this link in the description. Go down there, there's the full article on Bleeping Computer, as well as some updates on current numbers of people affected by this. And again, numbers have grown quite dramatically since the original putting together of this video yesterday. So again, things have moved incredibly fast. So again, I do recommend you check out the article on bleepy computer because there is more updates on this which of course i will add to the nascomper article discussed earlier on in the video let's get right back to it now on the flip side qnap could really ramp up that security there and again i'm not saying they're not at fault here but they could ramp up security quite tremendously there uh, and make sure a lot of these settings are defaults but i think on the other hand then people will start complaining that fixed settings do not um, will end up prohibiting customization so again this is why we live in this horrible gray area right now um other brands have gone about this a different way of course they've gone ahead and you know set up these defaults very early doors and limiting flexibility which again is great from a security stance for the most part it still doesn't mean they're invulnerable of course it really doesn't but again as long as we live in this world where we want uh, flexibility and customization and security at the same time unfortunately things like this are going to tend to happen now again we're going to continue to watch on this if resolution comes from this people can work on decryption tools people are able um, to reverse engineer the encryption code in order to generate a key there and do it quite quietly that is going to be great because one of the other problems with making videos where we do make massive highlights to ransomware attacks is it can often trigger uh, the attackers to change their algorithms or speed up their attack patterns because they know that you know they're on the 11th hour and this might end soon so again it's finding that fine line making videos hence the lack of a dedicated video but if a great decryption method comes about then of course a dedicated video dedicate your article and highlighting as many of you as possible will come about let's carry on with the news though back onto the arguably more pleasant subject of super fast ssd the brand team group who we've talked about in the channel before with their cardia series they have announced that they are working on producing their pcie gen 5 ssd this isn't a surprise of course they were going to enter that market they've done very well in the pcie gen 4 market and they are introducing a pcie gen 5 Cardia um, series, that's their gamer series SSD for they say Q3 2022. So that's like summer, basically. The the financial queues do change from region to region. Generally, the Easts work with the calendar method, and they're saying their PCIe Gen 5 SSD will be um, over 13,000 megabytes per second sequential read and 12,000 uh, megabytes per second sequential write. Almost certainly taking advantage of the Fizon on E26 that we talked about in previous videos, going up to four terabytes. They're stating um, that's pretty much everything we know about this SSD. It all comes from their own statements there on their own platforms. It's been reported on a few different websites there again you're going to start to see a lot of brands producing report uh, um, news stories like this as they're all going to use very similar early architecture with the fires on e26 controller almost certainly but also as NAND development moves forward and pretty much all of the SSD NAND um, users are going to be using 176 layer NAND at the same time and it's all going to be very similar quality but team group seems to have been one of the earliest ones to start promoting this early doors next up a pain for google drive users although arguably nowhere near as work, as bad as some of the ransomware stuff that we've discussed already those of you that have got a uh, huge amount of files on google drive uh, may have noticed that some of your files have suddenly out of nowhere started getting if not locked then the ability to share has been disabled for those that may not be following this um at the end of 2021 google was talking a lot uh, about their advanced ai uh, for file um assessing for security security and prevention methods measures uh, for those unaware a lot of the files that are on google drive obviously there are algorithms in place if you upload a file that is for want of a better word dodgy that we'll go on about in a bit then Google has the ability to flag that automatically and either restrict access to it via sharing, um, monitor it, or uh, out and out delete that file. Now, 
the scale of Google Drive has led to, of course, the utilization of AIs to do this. And in December, or late November, realistically, they did talk about how they're introducing a new AI algorithm into that process that flags things like uh, malware-related files, uh, phishing-related files, um, hate speech, and um, copyrighted content, of course, as well, which is rife, and a lot of that sort of stuff being shared on third-party cloud service. But unfortunately, it, um, Google had, Google's algorithm has started locking files seemingly for no reason. And lots of people, and um, particularly some researchers over at some of the high-end universities there have been doing tests where they've been doing uh, text files with innocuous names that have just got a single character, the number one inside, saving them in bulk. And they've found that this new algorithm has mistakenly flagged it inappropriate, flagged it locked. So there's a, a lot of kind of fluidity to that flagging system there. I will highlight that, of course, you know, we are talking about billions of files worldwide. It would be very hard for a human to assess that. And moreover, the security implications of having human beings viewing private files would be very difficult. So I think the reliance on AI there is fully justified. But still, it could be better on day one. And hopefully this is something that will be remedied. Google have themselves have put out a statement on this. So fingers crossed. This is something that Google Drive users are not going to have to kind of get frustrated by for a huge amount of time. And finally, something for the Xbox gamers out there, a subject that I talked about, um, I think about two, two and a half months ago. Um, one of the kind of downsides of the Xbox gaming platform that we talked about, the most recent iteration, great console, Game Pass, fantastic. But the storage upgrades, uh, currently you can only upgrade it with the Seagate expansion drive, great for Seagate, but um, of course... A lot of people want the flexibility, they want the ability to use the SSDs of their choosing on that system, much like PlayStation 5 users. And we talked about an adapter and a driver that was in the works for uh, an Xbox adapter that would allow users to be able to use lots of different SSDs, not just overly reliant on a single party SSD and therefore pricing um, might have a sense of exclusivity to it. Now, the adapter in question is now currently available on eBay. It's listed in multiple different versions from multiple different retail outlets. The cheapest price I've seen for it is about 15 quid. So again, that's close to $20, something like that. Um, but what I will say, current iterations of it only support a single WD SSD, which again, makes it largely redundant. You're only gonna make a tiny saving compared to buying the official Seagate expansion module there. And uh, this adapter, again, it's worth bearing in mind the Xbox, uh, that external expansion sport is a PCIe Gen uh, 4x2 slot there. So again, you're going to have to be thinking about size and scope there. And the adapter in question only lets you use 2240 length SSDs there. So again, capacity is a question. However, it does look like this is something that is still being worked on quite extensively by modders over in the East. And we're starting to see um, them proofing um, larger SSDs being utilized there, faster SSDs being utilized, and adapters that plug into the expansion slot but with a larger space array for larger SSDs as well. And add to that the fact that we're starting to see people being able to customize adapters originally intended for uh, Canon and Nikon uh, cameras that allowed them to install via that CF, uh, CF slot. Uh, larger SSDs, those adapters and that same logic is being applied to modifications for the Xbox console. And ultimately, that is going to result in larger SSDs being accessible and usable down the line with modding kits for the Xbox Series X and S. And of course, as this moves forward, the minute we start to see a larger range of SSDs being supported and usable via the accessible slot, albeit unofficially and without, uh, ideally, um, let's be realistic, uh, Microsoft's own endorsement of that, we're going to start doing tests on this platform, of course. We're going to look at which SSDs run better and, indeed, if certain SSDs run at all. So do stay tuned for that. But this has been Data News of the Week. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, subscribe and click the bell to be notified. But otherwise, I will see you next week.